How's it going guys? We have a lot to get through today. We have a new 8 minute gameplay video that's circulating by IGN. You can find the original video in the description below if you want to watch it in full. As per usual, we will also go over the latest news roundup that's been circulating the interwebs. If you want to support the video, click on the like button and share. If you want to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more Anthem news, Destiny news and when it's available, the Division 2 news. The video showcases an alpha build, sure, but it gives you an overview of what to expect from loot gaining, exploring, free roam combat, lore collection and most importantly world bosses. The world bosses in the free roam look fun to challenge and fight and also drop relevant loot is pretty damn awesome when you consider that fact alone. I mean if you have 30 to 45 minutes spare you can just jump in into the free roam and know that there's a chance that you can get something better than you have. The notion of that alone is great. Resources are gathered in the open world, NPCs keep the world alive and vibrant and the exploration aspect just makes it a joy to explore. I have heard from many that the game looks repetitive and you're simply going to be doing the same thing over and over again and based on the gameplay you're watching, you are correct. But is that by definition not what a looter shooter is? Repeating content and hoping for something better? I mean it's also the definition of insanity but let's not get into that. Based on what we are seeing and this being an alpha build only, so, so it was played and recorded some time ago, one can hope things will only get better by the final release. Again, full video in the description below so do check it out. But it seems there are plenty of resources around the world for you to collect, they're collected up through nodes, chests, loots dropping from enemies, world bosses, free exploration, I mean it can only get better. And the seamless transition from place to place just looks so smooth. Obviously this is most likely running on the PC at 60 frames per second, but it does give you an indication as to how good this game will actually play once you get your hands on it on February the 1st of January the 25th if you have pre-ordered. Right, it is that time again for a news roundup. Yes, this is the point of the video where I gather information you amazing people tweeted and got responses for. I'm still hoping Ben and Mike will respond to some of the questions I have and I will be asking those questions in the video as well, but hopefully they'll see the tweets and the number of tweets that they're most likely getting and respond. Right, on to the first question. So as you're aware, the Fort Tarsus is a solo instance social hub area. I wouldn't call it much of a social hub, but it is basically a solo instance where if you do go there, even in a group, you will go in solo. Victor Brigide asked, is it possible to keep your voice communication with the group after the mission even if each one is in their own respective Fort Tarsus? Ben Irving said yes. Obviously if you're on console you're probably going to be on Xbox Live chat or PSN chat, but for PC where it's VoIP use and if they're not using TeamSpeak or Discord or any of the kind, then this question becomes more relevant. For those people, the question was yes, you still will be in communication even if you are in your individual Fort Tarsuses as long as you're within the group formation. This next question is really interesting and it does shed some light. Taran Patel asked, is game progression account or platform bound and will you ever be able to move your progress across platforms if you purchase on more than one platform like PC to console? Mike Gamble responded, not at launch, maybe eventually. This is pretty much groundbreaking. If they can actually pull this off and give you the ability to cross save between different platforms, this will blow every competition out the water. This will set a new standard. I mean, Anthem has been setting new standards with their responses all the way through. Whether they'll deliver or not is a different matter. But the fact is, they are delivering in so many ways and if they can actually give me the capability to start on the Xbox, move over to the PlayStation and continue on the PC, not only will their sales of the games increase, but they will most likely create a new standard where everyone is to follow. They'll pretty much set the industry straight. This one feature here would be revolutionary in the games industry and if they can manage to pull it off, I'd love it. Cross save across different platforms, Sony, Microsoft, if you're listening, this is what the community wants. Make it happen. Give Bioware the tools to make this happen. This next question I'm not a big fan of. Brian Graham asked, is there fast travel? To which Ben Irving said, yes. Now as long as the fast travel is only to the Fort Tarsus, I'm okay with, but if it's the fast travel to every area in the game, it's going to completely break the immersion of the travel. I think being a world like this, the whole concept of being able to fly across it is the appeal. 
If you start to fast travel from point A to point B to point B to point C and all the way through, you're making the world even smaller. Destiny suffered from this greatly with the ability to fast travel, even though the EDZ was over twice the size of the Cosmodrome, according to the developers, it actually felt smaller because you could just fast travel from point A to point B and more importantly, you spent more time in loading screens than you did playing. So I'm not a big fan of this if this is littered all over the world, but I would be okay with it if it was to go back to your hub. So Ben, if you're watching this, if you could shed some more information as to what this exactly entails and how far you're going with this, I'd be that would be awesome. So this wasn't a question per se, but this was something Mike Gamble decided to put out there. He said, oh, before I forget, the progression, XP curves, as well as general in-game economy balance will be a bit easier in the demo. We want you to earn some stuff and feel what it's like. We will also give you 100 coins to blow on some fancy cosmetics. He followed it up with 100 coin. Apparently using plural is a sin. Good on you, PR. Michael Gamble then followed that even more and said, also, I think all cosmetics cost 25 coin in demo. Trust me, that's hella not the case in the real game. Now, whether this will mean that it's going to be more expensive or cheaper is undetermined. However, they are giving you some currency in game that is earnable. This currency is earnable in game. Now, the question that I had to my gamble was, obviously, there's going to be a microtransaction store that you can buy stuff for real money. But will there be a different store for coin and a different store for real money? Or will the both be combined and instead of spending real money, you could spend coin you earn in game? If that is the case, that is the perfect model. If it's not the case and you're going to have two different stores, that's kind of sucky to be fair. But at the same time, whatever, at least they're giving you the option to earn stuff in game and buy cosmetics. But as it stands, I do believe they're going to be combined and I do believe the coin you earn in game will be usable in the microtransaction stores in order to purchase the stuff without having to spend money if that is what you want to do. Gino asked, will you guys add more abilities for each of the javelins down the road? So maybe instead of only two choices for support abilities, we would have four or five. Ben Irving said, most likely, which means they're already looking ahead at adding more skills, abilities and tools to make your experience that bit better. This one is pretty much going to break the ice, guys. Crisp Kringle asked, is there a chance that there will be PvP in Anthem, Javelin vs Javelin? Ben Irving said, no PvP at launch. And this pretty much means that they're not rolling out PvP and that PvP will be arriving at some point in the future. They could have categorically denied and removed all hope that PvP would be there by saying this game will not support PvP, but they did not do that. If you read between the lines, they said no PvP at launch. And with that, that simply means that PvP will be a thing in Anthem. So for you PvP enthusiasts, Bioware is doing right. They are concentrating on PvE at launch because that is the biggest aspect of the game right now. The game is not in a drought, it's got plenty of content, so they need to make sure the PvE content is there and it's enough to keep people tied over until the next content drop drops. However, with that next content drop, you may see the drop of PvP or it may be in the next one after that. But at this point, you can be pretty sure that it's a no-brainer, PvP will be in Anthem at some point. Hopefully, they can actually manage the PvP well and do it correctly and keep both aspects of Anthem separate so it can create a balanced and fun gameplay. They've got the dedicated servers, so that does mean that they do have the foundation to make the PvP actually worth playing. Real Life Colossus, pretty cool, said, when it's raining, can you fly for more longer? Ben Irving said, yes. Now, what does this mean? Well, as you're aware, if you're flying in the open world, your javelin overheats. If your javelin engines overheat, you'd lose the ability to fly and you become reacquainted with the floor you're so oh so familiar with. However, what's amazing here is the fact that if the rain hits your engines, it's cooling your engines down. So if you're flying through a waterfall, if you're flying through the rain or flying through anything that can actually keep your engines cool, it extends the duration of your uptime. Now, I mean, this is mind blowing. I mean, Maybe other games have done this, I just haven't encountered them, so this sort of thing is new to me. But the fact that I can use my environmental terrain to extend my flying time, to use certain things to my advantage, is pretty awesome. Earlier in one of my videos, I also showcased the scene where the javelin was running through water in order to cool it down. I mean, 
This game pretty much has everything right now and it's getting me more and more excited with the way that developers are responding with their transparency and the good news they keep on giving. Just start answering my questions too so I can finally get the answers to the questions I'm so yearning for. For you Tenchu stealth mechanic people out there, Jake Faulty Optics asks is there going to be a stealth mechanic or invisibility in Anthem and simply there is not. No stealth mechanics, no ninja tactics in this game at all. Matthew asked, will there be weekly activities to do, and if so, will they be javelin based or pilot based? Ben Irving responded, yes, there will be weekly activities. However, they will mostly be pilot. Maybe some will be crafting, I assume, by that definition. If it was javelin, he would have said javelin, so I'm assuming most of them will be pilot based, and the others will maybe be some crafting or collection or something like that. But there will be weekly challenges to keep you tied down and gaming throughout the week. And finally, Thomas Polka asked, I was wondering what happens to EXP once you reach max level on a javelin. Will it accumulate to earn you a reward once you reach max, or will the only reward be drops? Ben Irving said, there are some uses for it, more on that later. So I'm assuming it's going to be a case of something like Destiny, where you get rewarded with loot box engrams every time you rank up after you've reached max level. Obviously in this game there are no loot boxes, so I'm assuming you may get some coin every time you level up, which is kind of cool, it's an easier way to actually get the rank to start accumulating coin, and obviously the more you play the more you'll get. Well guys, that's pretty much everything for this week's news. We've got some news on cross save, we've got some news on PvP, we got to see some open world bosses. There was plenty here to keep you going. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought regarding cross save, regarding PvP, regarding the environmental benefits, the open world, the world bosses, and anything else you saw in this video. Or maybe you have other questions that are burning that you want answered fire them away in the comment section below and I will get to them. I do read every single response and I do respond where I can. So, until the next video, remain legend.